Hello everybody. Great to be with you again. Um, today's video is going to be something of a shift from what I normally do. What I normally do is I pick a topic and then I sort of hold forth on it, uh, hopefully in some combination of humor and profundity. And today what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to share a new practice with you. Um, for those of you who read the blog on AwakeningClarityNow.com, you may recognize that I'm, I'm talking about what I did call the attention narrative. I don't call it the attention narrative anymore. I call it the, uh, uh, just simply call it attention practice. Because it's a way of directing our attention on different aspects of the one thing so that the, the polarities lose their significance. Um, I've I've, this arose originally spontaneously in uh, a clarity session that I was having with a client in Canada. This was someone who had been awake several times with me and uh, she just I couldn't get her back in, in the room so to speak. And this came out of nowhere. She woke up immediately and whenever that happens I always make a notation of that. So uh, I don't know how effective this will or will not be for people in pre-awakening. I don't do a lot of pre-awakening work anymore. And it's well, but I know that for those of you who have all, who are in post-awakening, I don't care if you've had a glimpse, it that if you've if you've had a breakthrough, if it's an authentic breakthrough, if you've had um, a, a real live good look at yourself to where it's where it can't be unseen, then you're in post-awakening on one level or another and this will prove to be I think quite um, effective for you. One of the reasons that this practice is as successful as it is is because this unit spent a lot of years in recovery and did it as a very very active uh, sponsor and so I worked with people who were in denial on a daily basis. I worked with people who were in denial for more than a decade and I got pretty good at pulling them out. I got pretty good at pulling them out of, uh, uh, um, of denial, or, you know, so to speak. I mean, I was obviously just facilitating, but for, for, for all intents and purposes, people were saying, go to Fred, he can help you. So I got very good in that, oh, at denial, and that's what we're doing here in non-duality. We're all in denial, and this helps to bring you out of that denial in a really non-threatening way. In other words, the ego will allow this to pass because it doesn't threaten the ego at all. Not really. Um, and we don't, you know, we don't have to get rid of our egos. Obviously, you, you, I mean, mine's been on stage here for several years, so you know that uh, you don't have to get rid of your ego in order to wake up. It's a good idea to stop believing it, <laughs> or you know, or, or placing too much importance on what it says. But if you're waiting for it to quiet down, it's going to be a long time. So let's just let me just cut this short and and go straight into the practice itself. So go ahead and get if you if you've got something else going on, get that taken care of. Pause this um, and be prepared to just sit with me for 15 or 20 minutes. I don't exactly know how long this will take. And then when you're done with that, come back and unpause it and. We will assume you're unpaused and, and that you have things situated to where you can be quiet and alone for a little while. So please just go ahead and relax. Relax the best you can and close your eyes. So relax and close your eyes. There you go. So now that you're in this position, just notice that it's actually your eyelids that are closed. That you're closed that your eyes are still open and they're still looking. But what they're looking at is simply a dark field. They're no longer looking at manifestation. They're no longer looking at fullness. They're looking at a, just, a, just a dark field. And there may be some mind trash in there or some uh, almost hallucinatory stuff that, uh, that photons might be doing this and that and the other. Okay. But it's essentially a blank field, is it not? That's what's really there, is that there's a blank field. So 
this blank field that that you're quote looking at what I want you to do is I want you to go out and see if you can find a boundary to that blank field can you can you find a boundary if it feels like the body might be the boundary just recognize that you're not actually experiencing you're you're focused on the dark field you're focused on focused on the blank field and there is no apparent body there i mean there's sensations that are coming up in your mind and perceptions uh, that are coming up that are declaring that there's a body here but that's what you have is sensations and perceptions you, there's there's nothing there unless you unless you make a story out of those there's no body there in your present experience not in your experience it might be in your mind if you if you go back and you and you revert to thinking but that's not what we're trying to do in every moment we have the ability to make a choice we can either pay attention to our thinking or we can pay attention to our experience and what we typically do is we pay attention to our thinking and our thinking about our experience and we thus miss the actual experience all the time because I will tell you that reality is the most obvious thing you've heard that before but I'm going to show it you a little bit more about it in this video so can you find a boundary to the blank field no I know you can't not if you're really looking so be open-minded and bring your attention back in the other direction just check to see if you, you can find a center now while you're checking to find that center let me ask you a question if the first thing that we found was a boundless field can a boundless thing have a center no <laughs> so that should that should curtail your uh, your looking there so we don't have a we don't have a boundary we don't have a center what we have is a blank field now check to see if that field is dead or alive Is there anything about that field that reminds you of a corpse? Or is that field subtly but distinctly alive? I think there's an aliveness to it. You can feel it. You can, quote, see it. You can just, you just know it. The field is alive. So we have an alive field that we're, quote, looking at. It's a boundless field. There's just one field. When we say boundless, do you understand what that means? That means there's no boundary anywhere. So this field goes out and out and out and never stops. There's actually no outside to this field. It's boundless. That's what boundless means. There's no outside. There's no inside. There's just this boundless field. That's all there is. Just boundless field. Nothing to it. And it's... And... and, and this voice this is occurring within that field uh, any hearing that's taking place is occurring within that field now what I want you to do is I want you to to see if that field there is that aliveness is there not yes so what I want you to do is I want you to tell me now if you can actually find a difference find excuse me a line of separation now a difference is okay or a line of separation or division between what's looking at the field and the field itself now first off we said it was a boundless field did we not so if it's boundless can there be anything outside of the field looking into the field? Now, if it's boundless, it means there's one thing, doesn't it? There's just one thing. There's just one thing. It is this boundless field. No inside, no outside, no this, no that, no, no field and other. Just field. So there's this boundless field and it is alive. The next question is, what about you? 
Are you outside of that boundless field? Can you be? It's a boundless field. There's nothing other than this field. You cannot possibly be outside that field. So you are at the very least within the field. Now, are you within the field? Or are you the field? Can you find a line of separation between the field and you? Can you find any division, any demarcation between the field and you? And of course, when I'm saying you, I'm not talking about that body that we have no evidence for. I'm talking about you. You figure out what you means. But there's no differentiation between this field and you, is there? No. So you are this field, are you not? So don't you know that you are? Do you know what you are? I don't think you do. You just are this field, are you not? Yes. You are this boundless field, aren't you? So let that, just let that steep for just a moment. That there's a boundless field and you cannot be other than it. Know yourself to be this awake, aware consciousness. Because the field is experiencing itself, isn't it? Because there's nothing else that can experience the field. It's a boundless field. So all experiencing has to be taking, by definition, has to be taking place within the field. <coughs> but we say within the field as if there is an outside of the field, and there is no outside. There's no outside, there's no inside, there's no left, no right, no east, no west. There's just boundless field everywhere. Everywhere. We can't, the mind can't begin to grab the size, quote, size of this thing. But it's, it's really infinite. It's beyond size. So feel yourself, know yourself as this boundless field. And now that you've got at least a, an inkling and perhaps a very solid experience that you are this boundless field, then what I want you to do is I want you to open that unit's eyes and I want you to look around the room you're in. Now close your eyes. Is what you just looked at outside that field? Outside that boundless field? What's outside that boundless field? Nothing. Am I right? So what we just looked at has to somehow be in that field, doesn't it? Because it's a boundless field, it cannot be outside that field. So what are we looking at when we have our eyes open? What are we actually looking at? And, or, or, or we could say looking through. But what are we looking at? Open your eyes again. This is a boundless field too, isn't it? I'm not talking about the walls in your room. I'm talking about the whole thing. If we walk outside right now, which I've done this outside and it's very powerful because you can really feel the, the expansion, but I can feel it right here, right now. I don't have to, I just noticed that, that I can't actually sense an end to this boundary. My eyes might report something, you know, my hands might report something, but in fact I know that that is not so. When we look at where does this, where does all of this occur? It occurs in outer space, does it not? How many fields are in outer space? Is there separation? No. 
It's one field, isn't it? So when we say outer space, what, what do we mean by, is there a difference between outer space and inner space? Can you actually find that? Close your eyes again. Close your eyes and just know yourself to be this boundless field. This is what you are. You are this boundless field. You see how alive this field is? Do you see that what potential this field has? Can't you just feel it? It's just bursting. I mean, this is emptiness, but it's just in... But man, it's an emptiness that's full of something, isn't it? Yeah. It's not full of, it just is. There's a potential held within that field somehow. Language actually does not serve us well here. You just have to do this. And then you can then you can know what I'm trying to describe. So know yourself to be that conscious awareness. Open your eyes and look around the room as conscious awareness. Hang on to the knowledge of who you are. Hang on to the knowledge of who you truly are. Look around. So in this field, can you find a point of separation between what's looking and what's being looked at? Pick any object. See if you can find a point of separation between what's looking and what's being looked at. Can you feel the boundless space? Close your eyes. So right now, you are experiencing yourself as emptiness, aren't you? You experience yourself as unconditioned space. It's not dead space, it's unconditioned space. But without it, there can't be, there can't be conditioned space. There can't be anything else without this unconditioned space. So when this little unit, which you can see, is just appearing within that boundless field, and it actually it's not even appearing right now while our eyes are closed. There's sensations and perceptions, but there's no body. So let's open our eyes. So now look at this unit. Look at it. Is that actually you? Is it really? Is that you? Or do you notice that, th that this thing, this unit, is appearing inside of you? Isn't it? Can't be outside of you, can it? Because isn't this a boundless field? This is just you're experiencing yourself now as conditioned space, aren't you? You're experiencing yourself as manifestation. You're experiencing yourself as wholeness versus emptiness. As oneness versus emptiness. But if that's a boundless field when we have our eyes closed, and this is a boundless field when we have our eyes open, can there be two boundless things? Can there? On a practical level, can there be two boundless things? Can there be two infinite things? I don't think so. We can have one really, really big thing, or two really, really big things, but if one of them didn't fit inside the other, then one of them wouldn't be infinite. But you can be just one infinite thing. So this boundless field of, of conditioned space cannot be other than the boundless field of the unconditioned space. It's just you're experiencing yourself in a different way. Close your eyes, please. Now 
know yourself to be this. So this is a good way to put it that I had not have thought of yet. With your eyes closed, you are this. With your eyes open, you are that. So, eyes open, eyes closed, you are this, you are that, but is there a difference between this and that? It can't be. We have, we have a boundless field. That boundless field is not other than you. We have one thing and it's you. And at one level you're experiencing yourself as emptiness. At the other level you're experiencing yourself as form. Open your eyes, please. Just like that, isn't it? Isn't it just like that? Hmm? Emptiness, form. Emptiness, form. Unmanifested, manifested. Unmanifested, manifested. No thing, thing. No thing, thing. No thing, thing. Know yourself to be this. Well, actually, now we're saying know yourself to be that. Close your eyes. Know yourself to be this. Open your eyes. Know yourself to be that. Close your eyes. Know yourself to be this. Now open your eyes again. Can you sense the transparency of all of this? Do you realize that there's just the one boundless field? There's just, quote, the dark field. There's actually just, there can't be emptiness plus. There's either just emptiness or there's not. So within, somehow, within the boundless field of what we normally think of as emptiness, there are appearances, aren't there? zillions of them is what we think but are there really a zillion appearances here one appearance here one appearance here showing up lots and lots of different ways so there is tremendous diversity because we're talking about oneness not sameness oneness not sameness so but tremendous diversity but at the core of that, there is unity. So the practice on this is to experience ourselves as unconditioned space, to experience ourselves as conditioned space. When you open up your car door, do you have to sweep space out in order to get in? No. You just get in. What happened to that space? I'm not saying what happened to the air, but what happened to the actual space? Did it go somewhere? No, it just shifted. It just, it just moved from being unconditioned to being conditioned. And it'll be conditioned as long as that unit's sitting in it. When that unit gets out, it'll be go right back to unconditioned. And it's perfectly happy to accept things. That unconditioned space is perfectly happy to accept conditioned space, however conditioned space shows up. So if we can know ourselves, so close your eyes please, if we can know ourselves as this unconditioned space, which is both alive and aware, and this cannot be other than us because there isn't anything other than us, there's just one field and it's alive and aware. So we experience ourselves as unconditioned space. We experience ourselves as conditioned space. And while we're conditioning ourselves as conditioned space, we can begin to notice that is this, is, I mean honestly, look with an open heart as well as an open mind. I know we have the story of all this solidity, but I think that physicists would tell us that this is all energy. 
Einstein was the one who came up with the idea that energy and matter are equal. So, energy, matter, energy, matter. But when we're looking at the matter, what is it? It's still energy, isn't it? So all of these, all of this is really energy moving in different vibrations occurring within the one thing, the single field that you are. The actual practice to this is simply knowing yourself as unconditioned space, getting really solid on that, finding yourself, noticing that it's alive, that it's aware, go through it every time. Whatever, until, until you don't have to. So that when you close your eyes, you can experience yourself as the unconditioned. And then shift back into this. And just notice that, that you're experiencing yourself a different way. Because there's no, different, there's, there's, there's no difference between either one. There's just one. There is no either one. There's just one. And then train yourself to look. Can you feel the transparency? I'm not saying you're actually going to see it in your vision, but I tell you, I can almost. <laughs> it feels like I can just, I can sense it so strongly that it feels like vision, as bizarre as that sounds. <clears throat> so I hope you find this useful. Let me know if it does. Uh, you can write me at fred at awakeningclaritynow.com fred at awakeningclaritynow.com I'll be very interested to hear from you. I may or may not be able to answer you depending on how much mail I get, but I promise you it will be read. And it will be responded to if it's all possible. Thank you very much.